All right, guys, welcome to the first in a series of videos on how to properly set up your Phantom 3 straight out of the box. If you follow this series of videos, I'll literally walk you through from charging to the first flight so you're successful the first time out. Now the very first thing you want to do is fully charge both the transmitter and the flight bed and the reason being is that the next step is software updates both in the Phantom and the transmitter so you don't want no interruptions while doing that process. Um, the way you do this is you take your charger, plug it into the wall and on the other end here it's unique to the Phantom 3. It has both a transmitter charger and a flight battery charger. Now you can charge them both at the same time. I've tried it, it works. Uh, but DJI does not recommend that, so we're not gonna be doing that today. So let's pick one and start charging it. What's to note on here is both in the transmitter and a flight battery, when you plug in the power to them, they're gonna react and they're gonna light up and they're gonna show you the charging process. And when they're done, they're gonna turn off just like this also. Now one note on the uh, transmitter, okay? You can press the button and check the charge level. And on the battery, you can also press the button and check the charge level. You can see I've got one bar on here. So again, you plug it in, it's gonna light up, it's gonna react, and when it's done, it'll go blank like this, it'll go dark. So that's when you'll know it's fully done. So you just take your prongs on here, it only goes in one way, and you slide it in the side here, make sure it's fully inserted, and then you'll see it come alive here. And it'll literally blink and go down here as the progress progresses and then it'll fully shut off. Now once the batteries are fully charged for both the Phantom 3 and the transmitter what you want to do is obviously clip in the battery pack into the back of the Phantom and make sure it's fully secured and clipped in. It only goes in one way. We're going to leave the blades off for now. You should always have blades off for any kind of software updates and what you may have noticed is you've gotten this letter from DJI basically saying that there's support great and that the also the pilot app for your iPhone or iPad is not compatible with the firmware inside of the Phantom 3 so we're going to, have to update that and we're going to update the transmitter also and the latest version of this iOS pilot app as of this recording is fully compatible with the Phantom 3 before um, May 6th it wouldn't even recognize a Phantom 3 so now it's fully compatible you just need to update the firmware in here so it can talk to it properly and I'll walk you through it right now okay so updating the aircraft is a little bit different than before on the Phantom 2 series with the USB port we're going to use the SD card slot on the side of the gimbal right here so there should be a card in there already so grab it out of there and we're gonna put the files on there so we can do the update now in order to get the files onto the micro SD, we're going to need an adapter like this right here sticking to the computer. So put your SD card slot in there and then put this whole thing into your computer and we'll take the files we download and put them on here. Alright, go over to your PC and open up my computer and it's going to look something like this. And then take your micro SD card and adapter and stick it in the, your SD card slot. It should show up on the left hand side here as a new drive. So click on that and see what's inside of there. Make sure there's nothing important on here because we're going to wipe this thing clean. Make sure you get it all off of there and then we can proceed with formatting. Right click on it, go down to format and FAT32 is just fine. Uh, default allocation size and you don't have to put a label on here. You can if you want. Let's make it simple and quick format is just fine. We're going to hit start, let it do its format, and this way to be fresh and clean for our DJI files. So there's no errors or problems. Okay, you can close that out, and then you're going to go to Google or Yahoo, whatever. Go to DJI. We're going to go to the website. And then you can go to Products, Phantom 3 Series, Downloads, okay, and then you want either professional or advanced depending on your version of the Phantom 3 you're going to download the new firmware so let's right click on that and save it and we're going to save it in temp internet where I save everything else for everything so we're going to save that, it's going to be a zip file so make sure you have something that can unzip it like WinZip or 7-Zip, something like that so we're going to close this up. We don't need DJI anymore. Let it finish downloading here. We can open Temp Internet in the meantime, I guess. 
and let this uh, go through here. It's kind of downloading slow, actually, considering the size of the file. Jeez. Um, so we have to wait for that. Okay, it's done downloading, so we're going to close that out. And here's the file itself, so we're going to unzip that. I use 7-zip because it works for everything, and there's never any problems. Always updated. So we're going to extract that. Okay, we got it extracted. Where'd it go? Phantom, right there. And then we're going to go inside of here. And this you don't need, but this bin file, which is a firmware file, is what you do need. So we're going to take that, copy it, or cut, doesn't matter. Take it to your clean micro SD card, and we're going to place it onto there. Now, once it's done going onto there, Okay, we're going to close up my computer, and then we're going to pull your SD card out. Alright, next we're going to take the micro SD card out of the adapter here. We're going to take it out of there, and we're going to stick it back into the gimbal on the side of the camera mount here. We're going to put it all the way in there until it clicks, like so. So it's fully inserted and locked in. And then back here is the power button for the Phantom. You want your remote control off, and then we're going to press this once, let off, and then we're going to press and hold it again until it boots up. After that, it'll automatically start updating the software on the Phantom 3. So this is how it's going to look. Press it once, and then hold. Let go. Let you see it. It did the first three beeps like that, and that means it's beginning the, soft, the firmware update, basically. And it's going to beep again when it's all done. Now, according to DJI, it can take up to, up to 25 minutes. When it's doing those four beeps like that, that means it's actually doing the upgrade right now. So just monitor your Phantom 3, make sure there's no errors, uh, stuff like that, because it's very critical to do the update process without interruption. Okay, and when the sound changes to this, where it's three beeps, one long, two short, that means it's complete. So you're going to take your SD card out after you power it down here. Same thing, hold, press it once and then hold it. And it will shut down. At that point, we're going to take the SD card back out here. Just press in on it. And we're going to take it out and bring it back to the computer to read the text file in here to see if it says successful or failed on the update process. All right, take your SD cards and put it back into the slot in the computer. We're going to read the text file now. It should be a text file written onto the SD card that's new. So we're going to go to it, and here's the text document right here for the result. And it says successful. So um, we know that the Phantom 3 is fully updated. Now it's time to update the remote control also. Okay, so now in preparing for the, the uh, controller itself, what I like to do is get all these files back off of here. Even the bin file, I'd rather put a fresh copy onto the, the SD card. So we're going to do a format again and let it go through. And then we're going to take the same software, firmware, that we use for the Phantom itself, the aircraft. Same thing. Take it again. Copy over to our micro SD card or USB stick and we're gonna put it onto there nice and fresh no other files on here it's all inside of this firmware update for both the aircraft and the remote control you just have to do them separately that's all so once it's on here we're gonna close it out and we are going to take the SD card back out so we can put it into the controller and do that now for the controller itself, there is no SD card slot, but there's plenty of USB slots on here. So you can uh, um, either use, see them right there, 
There's USB slots for upgrading and talking to it. So either you can use an adapter like this that has USB on one side and micro SD slot on the other side and put that in there and use the same micro SD we were using before uh, for the other one. Or you can simply stick a, uh, use a USB stick like this, plug it in your computer, same thing, format it, and put those uh, that bin file solely on here by itself and then you also plug it into here so it's your option depending on what you have uh, but what I'm gonna do is uh, use this reader right here and we're going to do it this way since I have it on hand okay so here we go we're gonna use the micro SD card with the USB adapter and we're gonna see how well this works and then you just simply stick it into the USB slot on the top of the controller here with the controller off okay so I opted for the USB stick on the back side there with the formatting and the bin file on there only same thing as before on the SD card and at this point we're gonna start it up same thing as the the aircraft once and then hold and then the light down here should turn blue when the update process starts which takes about 60 seconds to get into that mode once it boots up and all that. Right now it's red. And then it's going to take a little while to get into that mode. There we go. You can see it's blue now and beeping. And it's literally updating the firmware right now. So don't touch anything on here. Let it do its thing. Don't jostle it. Nothing like that. We'll get everything updated properly this way. Now once the update is done on here, it's gonna go solid green and the beeping's gonna stop. Like so. It just stopped. Now if it failed for some weirdo reason, uh, it's gonna go red right here. So at this point, we are fully updated on both the craft and the remote control.